outside, but inside the giant Illich steelworks, the furnaces are burning around the clock. They need to. This steel is one of Ukraine's most important exports, and the country desperately needs the cash. The other thing that makes this place really important right now is the man who owns it, Renat Akhmetov. He is Ukraine's richest oligarch, and he has crucially decided to support the government and to oppose the rebellion. And that means the 60,000 men and women who work here are now also against the rebellion, wherever their personal loyalties may lie. When separatists briefly took control of Mariupol last year, the steelworks organized teams to take down the barricades. Andre was in one of them. I will defend this city against any aggressor. As long as this place is operating, I can feed my family. I'm ethnic Russian and I don't care where you come from, Russia, America or outer space. If you disrupt my life, I will fight. Atop blast furnace number one, the Ukrainian flag now flutters, a sign to those who would divide this place. But despite appearances, Mariupol is not a united city. Victor is a retired steel worker. He tells me he is surrounded by pro-Russian neighbors. They demanded he take down a Ukrainian flag he was flying in his garden. Victor's own father was Russian. He fought in the Red Army in World War II. But Victor now has no time for what he describes as Putin and his gang. This is not a civil war. This is an artificially created conflict. It's being engineered by Putin and a bunch of bandits in Donetsk who want to join Russia. I'm very alarmed by what's going on. Every day I watch the TV and I see our young men dying. It's very distressing. But then, just as I'm leaving, right outside their house, I meet this couple. I don't feel any aggression from Russia, she says. Living in this city, I feel much more angry with the Ukrainian troops. How many people here agree with her?